U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping arrived at the Group of 20 summit in Rio de Janeiro on Monday. The leaders, as well as French President Emmanuel Macron, were greeted by Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. Brazil is hosting the G20 summit and it appears unlikely the industrialized and emerging market nations in attendance will sign a meaningful declaration regarding geopolitics. The meeting in Rio de Janeiro on Monday and Tuesday is overshadowed by two major wars and Donald Trump's election victory. Heightened global tensions and uncertainty about an incoming Trump administration have tempered any expectations for a strongly worded statement addressing the wars in the Middle East and between Russia and Ukraine. Experts instead anticipate a final document focused on social issues like the eradication of poverty, one of Brazil's priorities. Conservative lawmakers in the Polish parliament exulted at Donald Trump's victory, standing and applauding while they chanted his name. The prospect of a second Trump term has excited people on the populist right across Central Europe who share his anti-immigrant views and contempt for international organizations. But many others in a region near the war in Ukraine are afraid. They worry Trump could abandon Ukraine and force Kyiv into a deal that ends up emboldening Russia further or unwind the U.S. military presence in Europe. The change in Washington means Europe will have to invest more in its security and defense rather than relying on the American protective shield as it has done for decades, argues Michael Baranowski, managing director of Warsaw-based GMF East, part of the German Marshall Fund think tank. We Europeans Poles and French and Brits and preferably Germany as well need to step up, Baranowski said. Only by stepping up do we have a chance to keep the worst-case scenarios from happening. Both a bad deal in Ukraine and perhaps a lowering of U.S. engagement in Europe. Poland, the Baltic states and other nations across Central and Eastern Europe were under Moscow's control during the Cold War. When that era ended in 1989, it freed them to turn to the West. They never want to return to being satellites of Moscow. NATO members now, they worry that Trump in his second term could end a decades-long commitment to securing the peace in Europe. Just this week, a missile defense base in northern Poland was inaugurated, the fruit of years of planning by Republican and Democratic administrations. Polish officials expressed hopes that it was a sign that a bipartisan U.S. commitment to the region would endure. The whole world will see clearly that this is not Russia's sphere of interest anymore, Polish President Andrzej Duda declared. Trump has a long history of denigrating NATO, and former administration officials say he repeatedly threatened to withdraw the U.S. from the alliance. 
His allies have described that as bluster or tough negotiating tactics that have pushed other European allies to take more responsibility, and argue that Trump didn't abandon NATO. The change in Washington has in just a few days changed the dynamic of Poland's presidential campaign before an election next spring. Foreign Minister Radek Sikorski, a former defense minister with ties in Washington, entered the running to be the candidate for centrist Prime Minister Donald Tusk's party, challenging the longtime favorite, Warsaw Mayor Rafał Trzaskowski. Sikorski argues that his experience makes him the better choice for the times. His opponents argue that the anti-Trump views of his wife, the American writer and Applebaum, could create complications with Trump's upcoming administration. The region is now holding its collective breath to see what a second Trump presidency will bring.